All right, welcome back to Morning Joe, 43 past the hour. And here with us now, former member of the Navy SEALs, Eric Reitens. He's the author of The Warrior's Heart, Becoming a Man of Compassion and Courage, and founder of the Mission Continues organization. Phil Griffin's been telling us a lot about Eric. But then, I, I don't know, it was kind of over the top when you read the jacket. I know. Read it. Can I read this? Tell so, us I'm about this dramatic man, reading. Please, um, dramatic Because it sounds as though we're talking about ourselves here. Yeah. Eric it, Greitens this, was born and raised in Missouri. Sure. Anyone could do that. Mm -hmm. Harry Truman. Yeah. After earning a PhD as a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford, mm -hmm. check, easy, yeah. uh, and serving as a humanitarian volunteer overseas. Sure, in his free time. He joins the Navy SEALs. Yep. Who doesn't? Check. A boxing champion and a decorated combat veteran. He's also the founder uh, of the nonprofit, and the mission continues. It's sort of inter inter and the author of a New York Times bestseller. What are you? Are you planning on trying to get get with the game at some point? Yeah. I, I, and make I'm, something I'm of yourself. On, I'm working on it. It's, God, it's, it's, it's sort of interchangeable with your bio. Slacker, <laughs> slacker. Yeah. Wow, impressive resume for sure. And you've got some. I, I want to hear about the Warrior's Heart, but you have this organization that you started that it's entitled the Mission Continues. Let's start there. Yes. Tell us about that. So what we're doing at the mission continues is we're working with hundreds of veterans around the country and we're helping them to come back and find a way to continue serving in communities across America. Uh, we're taking men and women like Jeff Hall who grew up in Chicago in a, with a family that had to survive based on uh, donations from food banks who today after a 20 year successful career in the Navy is actually helping to run a food bank in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, people like Natalie Williams who is a medic in the United States Navy who today is actually working at St. Louis Louis Children's Hospital. So, so a lot of um, veterans will say, or especially those who have uh, endured or served in repeat tours of duty, yes. it's hard to come back. Yes, it's almost easier to go back. So, what are some of your messages? What what helps them try and take that miss mission and that sense of mission? and have it work for them at home. Well, one of the things that you find in the military is that every single day you're waking up and you've got a team around you and you have a purposeful mission in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, when they come back home, one of the things that we're trying to do at the Mission Continues is to rebuild that sense of community for them, get them re-engaged in addressing hands-on community problems, whether it's water conservation, immigration, but they start serving again here at home. And when they do that, they really start to rebuild that sense of purpose and they make our community stronger as well. Um, the, uh, Joe, Joe, go ahead. I see I'm waving. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Eric, uh, talk to us about, first of all, it, it's remarkable reading what, what we've always heard that Navy SEALs have to go through too much, but you really in this book take us there and you say that it's the mission of the Navy SEALs to separate the merely strong uh, from those who are iron-willed. Mm -hmm. uh, can, you, can you talk a little bit about that and talk about how that sort of severe, intense training is prepared, have prepared the Navy SEALs to do what they've had to do over the past decade to protect America? Sure. Well, when a lot of people think about Navy SEALs, they focus immediately on the physical courage. They focus on the tactical proficiency. But one of the things that you find in order to make it through that training, in order to make it through that brutal training, you have to be doing it for a purpose that is larger than yourself. And for us, as we were going through the SEAL team training, there were moments when you just said, you know what, I can for the next 10 seconds, I can do this for the guy to my left, I can do this to the guy from my right, and I can be strong for them for the next 10 seconds. And if I can do that, I can make it maybe for the next 10 minutes, and if I can do that, I can make it to lunch. But what you found was that in order to really be of service and to make it through that training, you had to be dedicated to a purpose that was larger than yourself. And that is what has, uh, has helped, helped the Navy SEALs accomplish those missions overseas. And it's what all veterans bring home is that sense that they want to continue that service here at home. Joe? So, Eric, what was your low point in the training mission? When was it? Uh, when were you thrown upon cold rocks uh, in the middle of the night and had to crawl up those cold rocks? I mean, what was the low point for you? Uh, so for Joe, for me, my low point came at what should have been one of the easiest moments in the in the in Hell Week, which is considered to be the hardest week of the hardest military training in the world. It's a week where you go for the entire week. The average class sleeps for a total of two to five hours over the course of the entire week of training. And for me, when we were allowed to sleep for the very first time, we're about 72 hours in. Everyone was so tired that you'd literally fall asleep standing up. And everybody ran into the tents to sleep for the first time time and I couldn't fall asleep. 
Um, and I started to think then, I started to think, you know, what's going to happen to me if I can't sleep? You only get two to five hours of sleep over the course of the whole week of training. And I know, I remember I was actually going a little crazy at the time because a thought actually ran through my mind. I actually thought to myself, well, maybe, maybe if I can't sleep right now, maybe, maybe they'll let me take a nap later. Um, but, you know, you, you're, you're at this really, really difficult point. And for me, what happened was I got up, I walked out of the tent, and I just said to myself, I said, this isn't about me. Uh, this test isn't about my, uh, my service. This test is about my ability to be of service to the people who are asleep in that tent right now. And once I took that focus off of myself, I was able to go back into the tent. We started again and, uh, and continued with the training. John Heilman. You know, uh, yeah, I want to come back to the issue of, of veterans coming back and yes. <laughs> getting reintegrated back into society. In, in those interactions, um, on both sides, there's a lot of assumptions. Uh, veterans bring back certain kinds of conceptions about what the world thinks of them. Yes. The world has various assumptions about veterans coming back. They've heard a lot of things about post-traumatic stress. What are the what, Talk about the, the misconceptions that each side has about the other and how they can get over that. Yeah, so there are a couple of misconceptions on both sides. I mean, one of the misconceptions on the side of people who haven't served overseas is that they often assume that everyone who's coming back has post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm. Um, in fact, it's a small minority of veterans who have post-traumatic stress disorder, and those who do have it can find ways to get over post-traumatic stress, to work through those symptoms, and find ways to reintegrate into their community. So that's one misconception. On the veteran side, a lot of times there's this misconception that there going to come back and no one is going to welcome them, that they're going to come back and no one is going to understand them. In fact, there are communities around the country that are ready to welcome veterans. They want them to come back home. And if we can create the right kind of dialogue and create the right kinds of opportunities for veterans to start to serve again, what we find is that communities, veterans, civilians, and veterans, they come together and, uh, and they find great ways to make their communities stronger. The book is The Warrior's Heart. Eric Greitens, thank you so much. Uh, the organization, of course, as we mentioned earlier, is The Mission Continues as well. Eric, thank you. You're Tomorrow welcome. on Morning Joe, Mayor Cory Booker will be here.